Let's look at a problem where we start with acceleration and we go to displacement and distance traveled. We're going to have to go through velocity, but the main goal is to get up to the position level and talk about displacement and distance traveled. Okay, so we start out with uh, acceleration is given, let's say it's given algebraically, 2t minus 6, and the velocity is given just at one point. We're going to need that to deal with the arbitrary constant. Well, step one, we know that to get the velocity, it's some sort of antiderivative, some sort of integral. And um, actually, let me display that. And what is it going to be? It's going to be an indefinite integral because we need the actual function because we're going to integrate that again to find displacement and distance, distance information. We're going to see the next step is actually a definite integral, but this is an indefinite integral. Okay, so this is going to be the integral no, uh, oops, of a of t dt, but just the indefinite integral. And so that's going to be t squared minus 6t plus c. Remember the plus c is really crucial because that is determined by this information. You don't want to forget that. So how do we do that? Well, this says when you plug in t equals 1, minus 6 times 1, plus c, then the output should be 3. Notice one thing that's easy to get mixed up is just the way I wrote this, the 1 is on the left, the 3 is on the right. Here the 1 gets plugged in on the right, the 3 gets plugged in on the left. There's nothing meaningful about the, which psi of an equation is which. It just happens to be that they switch. If this is the input, this is t, this is the v value that you get. So be careful with that. It's a common thing to, to mess up with. Okay, so c is pushing everything on the, onto the other side is 3 plus 6 minus 1, which is 8. Okay, so <clears throat> v of t is in fact um, locking up the computer. There we go. So it's t squared minus 6t plus 8. Okay, now step 2 kind of depends on what problem you're doing. If all it was asking for is displacement, I wouldn't need to know much more about the velocity. I would just go ahead and do an antiderivative. In fact, I'd do a definite integral, which we'll do in a minute. But for distance traveled, remember, you need to figure out where the turnarounds are. And you need to do it as a sum of separate legs, all counted positively. So because they're asking distance traveled, let's do step two is find the turnarounds. Okay. So we're just going to set v of t equals 0. And that happens to factor, because I chose it to factor. Um, there's no necessary reason that's going to happen, but in a book problem, especially an intro book problem, it's often contrived to, to factor. Okay, so in other words, t equals 2 and 4. Now, I only care about 0 to 3, and so the 4 is not really that important to me, but there is a turnaround to t equals 2. Okay, now step 3 um, is a definite integral step. Okay, and version 1 is just the displacement. Okay, that's not going to use the turnaround information. It's just going to say that displacement, mm, let me put it, is just the definite integral from the starting to the ending time of the velocity dt. That is, in fact, how we in our class discover the, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so we just plug in this function. Let's put it in parentheses to be correct. Okay. And that is another antiderivative. Okay. So t cubed over 3 minus 3t squared plus 8t. We don't need a plus c here because we're just going to evaluate at 0 and 3 and, sub and subtract. So the plus c would cancel anyway. Okay. And putting it in 3, let's see, 27 over 3 is 9, uh, minus ooh, 27 plus 24. And then it happens to be that we get all 0 when we plug in t equals 0. Note that there's lots of functions like cosine, e to the x, secant, uh, that don't evaluate to be 0 at 0. So don't let your subconscious tell you, oh, when this is 0, I just ignore the rest. No, no, no. Just you are. It is there. It just happens to not contribute in this problem. Okay, 9 plus 24 is 33, minus 27 is 6. So that's the displacement. That's relatively simple. The main thing is this idea that it's indefinite first, then definite for the two steps, going one rung up the ladder each time. Okay, version 2 is a bit more annoying. That's for the distance. That's where we actually do have to take into account this turnaround information. Okay, so the distance 
is going to equal, well, I'm going to take the integral from 0 to 1. That's going to give me the displacement um, from the start of my interval that I'm interested in to the first turnaround. And then that might turn out to be negative. And so I could write it with an absolute value. And I'm going to write it in a slightly different way in a second here, but that's one way to write it. OK, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Whoops. I meant, I meant control C. I'm going to do the same thing, but from 1 to 3. And again, make sure I t treat it as positive. Okay. Now, this is a perfectly legal way to do things. I just like to do things slightly differently. I want to go back to V. I'd like to know which one of these is actually go going to be negative inside the absolute values, and which one's going to be positive, because that gives me a good check on my answer. Okay. Here, this is a parabola pointing upwards. So in between 2 and 4 is where it's going to be negative. Outside that, it's going to be positive. So it's going to be plus, negative, plus on the sign chart. So this part should be positive, and so I shouldn't really need those absolute values. And I'll go ahead and check and make sure that's positive so I don't get, get myself messed up. But I don't really need the absolute values there. Here, this guy is between 1 and 3. That's where this function is negative. So for example, when, uh, ooh, this is a 2, sorry. You must have been wondering, why was I saying 1? OK, the turnaround is 2. I don't know why I got confused. Um, here, between 2 and 4, uh, like when t equals 3, this is positive, this is negative. So it is really is negative. So here, the, the motion is backwards. And so instead of an absolute value, I'm going to be more explicit about it. I'm going to say minus, OK? So you can definitely leave in the absolute values if you want. That's legal. But I like doing it this way to give me, give me more control and more error checking. OK, now <clears throat> it's exactly the same antiderivative that I had before. And both of these are the same antiderivative of each other. It's just the evaluation uh, and the signs are the tricky part. OK, so that's a t squared and then plus 8t. That's going from 0 to 2. And then minus, and then hopefully what's in these parentheses is going to end up being uh, negative, or else I'm misleading myself. Because it should be negative, and then the negative outside is going to switch it to positive. OK, minus 3t squared plus 8t from 2 oops, to 3. OK. All righty. So now I just evaluate that. OK. So that's going to just give me the contribution at 2. And that's going to be 8 thirds minus 12 plus 16. OK. Notice that is positive. That's 4 plus 8 thirds. So that's positive. I didn't need to flip it after all. Good. OK. And then here, I'm going to get two contributions. I'm going to get the, ooh, this is a familiar thing. The evaluating this at 3, I already know that. I'm just going to write it out, though. Mine minus 27 plus 24. That's going to give me the 6 that I was familiar with before. Um, and then minus, and then, in fact, the other one's pretty familiar as well. It's just what I, happens when I take this and I plug in 2. OK, and so that's going to be 8 thirds. This, often hap this always happens, really. You get some duplication here. OK. So once you do the arithmetic in one, you can just copy it to the other. OK, so that is 4 plus 8 thirds, or 20 thirds. That's, a, that's the positive distance it went from 0 to 2. OK, and then minus, now this was 6, and then minus 20 thirds. OK, that's 18 thirds minus 20 thirds. I'll just do it in place. OK. Or in other words, it's 20 thirds. That's the displacement, which was positive in the first leg. And then minus a minus 2 thirds. It did a small extra bit of displacement the other way. And I'm purposely switching that. And you should check at the very end, you should be taking these two contributions and adding two positive numbers. Because distances, real honest to god distances, not displacements, always add 22 thirds. Okay. So that's definitely more work and a lot of more opportunities for arithmetic errors. But it's not um, really more calculus. The calculus is still the same. Okay.